what makes you so different? Because there are radio stations out there who have jocks who interview people for a living. This is what they do. Mm-hmm. Now those same interviews are just going on the radio stations, YouTube and, you know, dot coms. But it's something about these Vlad TV interviews. Number one, what makes you different? And number two, is it as an interviewer, is it a skill set that you developed over time? Or did you realize early on that I have a knack for this? You know, I'm a little better than this than you know, people who are getting paid to do this every day, working at radio stations and or television? I mean, I I was not great at it in the beginning. Uh, This was a skill that you develop over time. And, you know, it it isn't until you don't really realize until you sit down with someone who's doing an interview for the first time and you kind of see how they operate. You're like, okay, like, it's you know me me and Jamel Hill when I interviewed her we, we talked about how interviewing is sort of like a craft it's not something yeah. you can really go to for and when you graduate you're an expert at it you just got to chip away at it year after year like you're you know like you know a leather worker or or, or something of you know something that just kind of you know you make swords or cutlery like it's something you just keep working on year after year and you get better at it um, but what what I think made what we do is different. I mean, cause think about it at the time there really were no podcasts. There were no, um, you know, things like that. Most interviews happen on a radio station format. And I mean, even to this day in 2020, if someone does an interview at a radio station, only if, you know, they'll play maybe five minutes of it, you know, between music, between commercials and so forth. So we, we kind of had this advantage of having a long form format where, I can sit down for someone with an hour and put it out and approach it completely different than someone at a radio station. I could also focus on people that are not on promo runs or the A-list artists and so forth. I I could get people that are just, you know, have very interesting stories, but are not household names, you know, street guys, rappers from the eighties and nineties, um, actors that haven't done a movie in a while, but have some classic films under their belt, people that the mainstream kind of ignores. And and it was, it was that kind of focus. And it was also like, I felt that the hip hop media was always just pretty much just public relations. Most of the time, Um, they, they weren't going as hard as Barbara Walters or 60 minutes or Geraldo Rivera, or, or, you know, some of these, some of these like legendary interviewers where they ask the really tough questions and they dig in and, and, you know, the interviews aren't always comfortable and and fun and cheery, but, but the effect of them are are, are timeless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I saw a Barbara Walters interview with Trump from the eighties that that's now circulating because she, she went hard in that interview. Um, And that was sort of the approach. That's who I looked up to. I looked up to 60 minutes. Uh, I didn't look up to Sway, you know what I mean? And Sway has his own lane, but that wasn't the lane that I wanted. And, I started doing those types of interviews and even though, you know, you see the comments of, you know, you're the feds or the, you're the police or whatever else, the, the audience loved it. The audience ate it up because those are the questions in the barbershops. Those are the questions that people have with their friends, you know, like, Oh, you know, I, when he talks about that in the song, is he, is he really, you know, is there, is that real or is he just making that up or, you know, you know, oh, does, does this person really, is he, is he as authentic as he claims to be? Or has he done the things that he, he said that he did? I, I, I ask those questions and I bring it up. And over time, it kind of became a, a calling card and, and it became a differentiator uh, to those things. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I bring, you know, I, I grew up in the suburbs in, in San Mateo. You know, then, then I went to school in Berkeley and lived in Oakland. But, you know, my, my upbringing was different than the typical hip hop interviewer. So I understand as, as a white kid who loves hip hop, I know what interests me mm-hmm. and audience, which is different than someone who grew up in the Bronx, you know, you know what I mean? And, and was around some of these elements already. It may seem normal to them. For me, it's not normal. So I'm going to ask certain questions that other people aren't gonna ask. 
And, and that just sort of became a style that, that to this day is still being used. Vlad, a, a couple of questions. Number one, you do interview people who have these crazy stories, but they may not be mainstream. Mm-hmm. And I remember when Vlad TV first started, you guys actually used to have music videos and, you know, you moved on from that and you went heavy yeah. with the original content. Did you start picking up these B-listers, C-listers, um, actors, porn stars? Was right. it just because it doesn't matter? Hip hop culture is broader than just music artists. Right. But I'm looking for people with interesting stories. Or was it just because you couldn't get the A-listers? Kind of a combination of both. I mean, listen, man, if my schedule was filled with with Kanye, Chris Brown, <laughs> and Jay-Z, then I probably wouldn't be, you know, interviewing people like Mob James or Keefe D or, you know, the, the surviving member of Millie Vanilli. Um, but I didn't have access to those people. And what I also started to notice was that when I get people who are sort of at a, at a bigger status, they, they have so many PR people and managers around them. You know, like I remember when I interviewed Rich the Kid, uh, you know, earlier this year, like, they're like, you, you can't ask me beef questions. And if you do, we're going to end the interview right then and there. And we're going to walk out. And I'm just like, I'm like, all right, look, I'm, uh, number one, if you want me not to ask certain questions, cool. But if you're threatening to walk out, if the conversation goes a certain type of way, I don't even want to do this. Interview. But they're like, okay, fine. No. And we kind of reached a middle ground and we did this interview. And although Rich the Kid had sold millions of uh, singles and, and was, you know, had songs with Kendrick and was like, you know, his last album was, was a really huge album. It ended up being such a boring interview because every, every question you know, there, there's people on the sidelines like waiting to jump in in case I asked the wrong question. He's like not really answering a lot of questions and he's he's not really like trying to open up and talk about the things that people want to talk about. Like, you know, people want to talk about the fight he had with Lil Uzi Vert. Like, exactly. that, was off, that was off the table. So we had this interview where so many things were, were not, I wasn't able to do it. So you have this big artist that gets very little, you know, one of the worst performing interviews of the year. And then I could take someone that no one's ever heard of, but the story is so dope. And, and this person is so open to talking about everything in the details that it'll get 10 times the views of the, of the so-called bigger artists. So it, it's one of those things where you, you have to use, you take your limitations and you turn them into, into uh, you know, a victory in, in a way, yep. you know, by, by figuring out ways around it. It, it, you know, you do ask the hard questions. Anybody who watches Vlad TV knows that. That's why people love your interview style. Has there ever been a behind the scenes where guests just wild out or threatened or even, you know, got physical with you? No, no one's gotten physical with me. Uh, I've had guests get angry in the middle of the interview. Um, I remember 03 Greedo. I was asking about this rapper that he had been beefing with um, previously and he didn't want to talk about it. And I kind of pushed a little too far because I was, I was trying to explain to him how that dude I'd interviewed him and that guy actually spoke highly of him. Mm-hmm. But O3 Greedo was also on, on his way to do like 20 years in prison. He was about to check himself in like a couple of days from then. So he was already on edge. And when I'm asking about things that he don't want to talk about, he got angry. He got up and was like, man, fuck, you know, I don't even want to do this shit. You know, I'm a gangster. Like, rah, rah, like you know, he got angry. And I'm like, all right, my, my bad. Let's, can we, can we finish off the interview? And he sat down and we finished off the interview. Then actually we kind of laughed about it afterwards. You know, but I didn't even put that part out because I just felt like, you know, like, like, like a breakfast club would put that out because th- they like those types of viral moments, you know, like Birdman walking out and so forth you know, or Fredro Star getting pissed off. For me, I just felt like this was kind of a bad look for the platform. And I'd rather just cut this part out and uh, show show the, the interview in a positive light overall rather than the drama around it. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.